Welcome to the Best Business Podcast, the podcast for established marketers, entrepreneurs, and CEOs, the ones who want to join me in my mission to create 200 new multimillionaires who solve world problems with entrepreneurship. If that's you, then this podcast was created to give you access to the tools, training, strategies, and tactics you need to achieve multiple seven-figure profits as soon as possible. This world needs the best business you can build, so please get ready, open your mind, believe you can do this, and let's build a better world together for future generations. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Daryl Urbanski, your host as always. And today we are joined by a very dear friend and a very, very special guest. It's actually his second appearance on our show, and his name is Jermaine Griggs. If you didn't listen to our first interview with him, I highly recommend it. It was one of the first three we ever released, and to date, it's our most downloaded interview so far. And that's after 80-something interviews. Not just because it's the first, but it's ahead of the others by almost double. And it's because of the quality and the content. And Jermaine has a long list of credentials credentials, including his a phenomenal business, hereandplay.com. It's a solid seven-figure business, has been for years. It actually has the four-hour work week, living the life other people and other gurus talk about. But not only that, the results he gets his students get, and also for the person he is it's just in day-to-day life, having been nominated one of the men of character for 2014. Just a phenomenal human being. Man, I consider one of my best friends, and it's an honor to have him again here on the show. Jermaine, thank you so much for joining us again. Really appreciate your time. How's it going? Hey, Daryl, good to be here. For a second, I was like, who is he talking about? Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> is that me? I know, you wouldn't know it. Your demeanor is so easygoing. But yes, so thank you for joining us. And what do you, like, how have you been, I guess? I, well, we've already chatted before. Let's just keep it real. We've been talking for a while. We're actually mid-conversation, having a blast talking about this stuff. And right now, kind of where we're headed is just talking about, almost like we, I just mentioned, uh, some of the results that his other people have been getting. So Jermaine, from the first interview, there was a course that was released called Automation Clinic. And this was very groundbreaking for a lot of people, especially in the Infusionsoft community. It was the first time anyone who had won Marketer of the Year for Infusionsoft really showed the nuts and bolts. People who did coaching programs, people like offered training, but I've been through it all and no one broke it down in the ways that Jermaine did in such a powerful way, how to build an automated business. So I guess Jermaine, where I want to talk about is, can we go through that progression at all? Like when you did Automation Clinic, why did you, maybe I should ask that because I know some of the people in Automation Clinic will be listening to this interview. Why did you even do that course? Because you're already doing great with hereandplay.com. Why would you even step aside from that to do a course on how to automate your business? That's a really good question. And uh, and that's the question I ask of all people in the expert space. And you'd be surprised, though. A lot of people, you know, when you get into Internet marketing and just all things online, you know, understand that there's there's good money to be made teaching people how to, you know, grow their businesses. But they start there oftentimes. And I guess people find it refreshing when they hear my story. It's like, not only has this guy been in the piano space for 16 years now, like it's all I've done. Like I've never had a job. I I went to college. I graduated, thought I would be a lawyer. But this business all while, you know, I started in my senior year of high school has been my thing. It's my passion. We've got millions of eyeballs and, and impressions and reach amongst our students. We've got tens of thousand students and it's what I do to this day like I'm in my studio right now it's a piano studio first it's a it's a music recording you know I've got lights and 16 cameras that this is what we do every day we're recording today but you know as my one of my mentors Dan Kennedy says one business will often beget another and if you are driven by what people need and desire and you've got, you're tuned into it, well, you know, okay, I I won Infusionsoft Market of the Year. Well, what does that result in? It results in tons of people asking me, can you do this for my business? You know, people begging me to come into their businesses and put these systems in place. And let me tell you this, Mm -hmm. I won Infusionsoft Marketer, let's say a couple years back, right? A few years back. It took me a whole year to answer that call you know, to like delve in this space a whole year. You go to when I won Infusionsoft Market of the Year. I'm trying to make this evergreen because I know people will be listening like five years from now. I don't want them to be like, uh, how long ago was that? But, you know, but you take the year I won (laughs) Infusionsoft, you take the the year I won Infusionsoft Market of the Year and you look at my who is record for automationclinic.com, that's a whole year. So it's kind of like, you know, I was pushed into it. People wanted to know the real. And like you said, people wanted uh, people wanted to really get under the cover, not just the theory of automation, not just the philosophy, 
philosophy of automation. They wanted to see a real business, like in a real market, you know, because if you could sell to musicians and piano players, come on. I mean, then, you know, apply that to the business world and B2B, and the results are just so much more exponential, so much more easier. Even we're finding, I mean, I'm not, I'm not scared to admit that even at Here and Play, we're like having paradigm shifts in our pricing and, and offering premium price products over a thousand dollars where previous, you know, it'd only be $70. So even delving in the business space, you know, for the, the past few years has even had implications and things that I brought back to my here and play. And they're very much related. I always say two different worlds, but you know, one world I can say, Hey, here's what I'm doing in the other world. And then uh, the other way around, I can, you know, take my experiences with my clients and all my use cases. And I can say, Hey, you know, I'm not advanced and so experienced that I can't try these cases back in my my other world. So I call it synergy. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, in fact, that's actually how we connected. Because when I when we first met, you were on stage, and it was the year that you won Infusions of Market of the Year. Although you probably didn't remember me, it was the next year when you came back to speak. That's when we really connected. But when you were up on stage, that's part of why I reached out and created that relationship was because you I'd already spent I'm gonna say at that time near fifty thousand dollars between coaching and courses and everything. And you get up on stage and you started talking about all this stuff. I'm like, okay, I've heard this. I've read books that talked about this. But then you started showing screenshots of your setup in Infusionsoft and in your business and scripts and web pages you had that you were using this stuff. And I'm like, who is this guy? I've been on the conference circuit for like a year and a half, two years. Nobody is walking the talk like him. One of the real big things that jumped out at me was all about RFM. And for some of the listeners not here who have no idea about that, can you just kind of like, what is RFM analysis? Sure, sure. I mean, really what it roots back to is data, right? There's so many different things you can do in your businesses and it's so many different models and, you know, you can get inundated with, oh, uh, you know, squeeze pages going to, to, you know, landing pages and then going to automated webinars or, you know, then maybe uh, another route might go to video sales letters and then they got to buy and then your, your order form and then your upsells and your downsells and you can really get inundated in these very specific I always say forest, trees, branches, leaves. And a lot of people start in leaves and things that if they don't have their numbers and their data down, that stuff is a bunch of activity without purpose. You know, so when you come back up and you you think high level, you say, what is the point of all this? What is the point of advertising? You know, it's not just to get a cost per click. If you're looking at only cost per click, you're missing the big boat. It's probably never going to work out for you. So if you go to the highest level, um, you know, after you figure it out, out what you want to do and, and who you want to serve and, and the needs and desires. You got a message to market match. You're doing something that matters. You know, once you've got all those foundational things uh, in place, at the end of the day, you got to figure out what's going to be the lifetime value of your customer. What 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 can you make that? You know, mm-hmm. and, and and as you put out your suite of services and things, you know, this will. Inf- on pricing, because if you're stuck in a $10, $20, $30 range, you know, it's going to be hard to get a lifetime value that is going to allow you then later on to scale. Because, you know, you're going to be, you're always going to be limited by, well, you know, my customers only worth $40 after a year. And so I really got you know, really passionate about figuring out how to extend the lifetime value of a customer, which is how much they'll spend with you on average in their lifetime, not their lifetime, but their life as a customer. You know, we first figured out that it's about a like 14 month deal. And after we figured that out, you know, RFM, what that does is it kind of allows you a framework of, you know, the health of your your business and who to focus your attention on, who to focus your resources on. The R is the most important part of the formula in this framework. The R stands for recency. And the the best way I can describe that is Janet Jackson's song, What Have You Done For Me Late. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> One of my favorite, you know, I love I I kinda I really like Janet Jackson. I, I like Rhythm Nation and that whole beat and and what have you done for me lately, Paul Abdul and stuff. And so you know, what that ask is when you look at your database, when you look at your funnels and stuff, you know, when is the last time this customer has bought from you and even on an engagement level has interacted with you? And and that if you if you were to bet, like if you're down to your last thousand dollars and you needed to make some sales and you had this database and you needed to bet like this this is real life i'm talking about here and you needed to like bet that thousand dollars you need to return some money because you need to pay the, the rent the mortgage 
and you have to bet. This is what you bet on. Do you sort your database by recency? That's what have you done for me lately? When is their last transaction? Do you sort your database by F? That's frequency. That's the number of transactions. Or do you sort your database and send to the people who have the highest monetary? That is how much they spend total. So when you've got, you got all of this in Excel, hopefully you've got an e-commerce system you know, that would give you that data. First of all, you got to be able to access the data. But let's say you had those three subsets. What I'm telling you here is that you sort by the people who have done business with you most recently mm -hmm. and that's where you go if you don't if you ignore the other two things and you just go there and you get on the phone with those people and you figure out what they need and you make an intersection of value to their needs then if, if i was if i was to my last that's how it worked and then secondly it would be like you know frequency and then monetary so i started saying okay this stuff is ground breaking even in the music by knit by ear niche where you know yeah my transaction sizes are pretty you know darn low but what we managed to do by really focusing our funnels on getting more frequency keeping people recent you know being intelligent about why they're getting certain offers on down the road because they're passing thresholds that are making me a little scared you mm -hmm. know or i know if they if they get past 6 months oh man they're going right. to they're not going to be as recent and they're probably you know out of sight out of mind and so you know we started doing that and and the end result was we we're able to take someone in the music market to well over $600 in lifetime value and 9 10 transactions compared to, you know, probably average site selling ebooks on ClickBank, you know, it's that $37 sale, one and done. And, and, and that's just so much harder to build a scalable and, and a business that's going to be here 16 years later. Right, right. Because here, even now, like you could pay off all your autoresponders, all your website fees. And even if, heaven forbid, knock on wood, something would happen to you, no one would really know because you've got all this automated stuff in place that your business will still carry on, right? And Sarah, I don't think knows how to shut anything off. Yeah, I could pass away, you know, uh, today, and at least I will live on for another three, four years. You'd be like, I thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's still email emailing me, right? Yeah. He's still emailing me. He's calling me to wish me a happy birthday on my voicemail automatically. He's sending text messages to me. He's still selling me stuff. He's got a launch coming up next week, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, I'm in heaven and stuff smiling. Right, 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 right. Well, that's incredible, and that's amazing. So the RFM, I think it really, a couple of things to add to that. I've heard in a few other different books, but in most businesses, and most people don't realize that, but most businesses will have completely new customer bases every six years, and that's kind of the idea is someone bought from you today, and then two years passes, and they haven't bought from you. Are they still your customer? Not really, right? So that's the RFM. So for people that are listening to this, I think right there, what you said is a huge tip for anyone who's, who's heard you talk about lifetime customer value, understands why it's so important, was trying to think of a way, how can I expand my customer value? I just loved it. You're like, it's about getting on the phone with these people and finding an intersection between their need, your value can contribute in a fair price, you know, and that's, and just trying to find a way to fulfill on that. I mean, that's just a great, easy, quick tip for anyone that's listening to the call. Just get on the phone with your customers, people who bought from you most recently, because they're the ones most likely to spend money with you again. And you talked that to people in Automation Clinic, and I know Lamar Tyler took that and using the four video sequence that you teach in that course and all the basic fundamentals that you teach, he actually was nominated. We thought he was going to win. He didn't win, but he was nominated to be business. What do they call it now? It's not market of the year. What is it? Business icon, I think, of the year now. Business icon of the year. So he was nominated, one of four nominees, I believe. Three. To be business icon of the year. Three. Three. Wow. Okay. So that really works. So I guess where does that take us then? So RFM analysis, know the power of automation. We talked about it in the last call. Again, people listen to this. If they didn't listen to the first call, you need to go back and listen to that because we talked about just the power of even things like what you said earlier, how you know this will be evergreen. Someone might be listening to this five years from now. And you talk about that a lot in our first interview, how when you create a piece of content, you always keep that in mind. So a lot of you, like your website, you don't necessarily put the date on things because you want to be able to use that in two years and not have people think think it's redundant because when you write it, you only write things that are timeless. So that's a key in automation. We talked about autoresponders and connecting those together. I guess. We'll, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, you're a big fan of Jim Rohn, right? Oh, huge fan. Yeah. I know. I remember when you were like on him, like, I don't know if you still are every day, but you know, <laughs> you, you would quote Jim Rohn daily and recommended some books to me as well. And, you know, one of his lines is, you know, think with the end in mind. So 
automation is a mindset. It's not just a, oh, what can I glean from Jermaine or guys and what kind of bubbles can I drag onto the screen and connect lines and, you know, it's not that. It's like, how do I think uh, with an automation mindset just in my regular life. So even on your call, I don't know how exactly, you know, you're going to use this call, but I can be very helpful in not throwing out absolute dates and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. you know, just to give people behind the scenes. I've just been programmed that way. Like if I'm on my own webinar and I'm like, I know I can automate this webinar later and I'm doing manual work right now. I'm, you know, I'm doing the webinar, of course, I'm going to stay away from like ruining the evergreen automation aspect of it. Sure, I can edit it later, but if you think with the end in mind from the beginning, you can save yourself the effort and the hassle and you can get things to automation quicker. And what automation really is about, though, is people think it's this like nebulous, magical, you know, magic hat kind of thing. All it is doing is systematizing what works. For you to know what works, you still got to do the manual work in the beginning. You still got to, you know, figure out what you don't automate mess, you know, for it to be automated at first, it needs to be a system. But for it to be a system, you do got to have some manual grunt work and seeing what has what's going to work for your niche. What's you know what webinars work. You know if you get on a live webinar and it just sells out, you get twenty percent conversion. Well, that's a good candidate for automation. You get on that same webinar and you can hear crickets when you do the call to action. <laughs> it is not a good candidate for automation. <laughs> automation right. is not going to fix that. So I've, I've made that mistake a couple of times. Now, I guess there's a good question because a lot of people hear that you, oh, you have the four hour work week and I've seen it myself, how impressive it is that you just create scripts. You're like, oh, I'm working on this software or I got my programmer doing that. How do you like, where does that come from? I Maybe it sounds silly, but for a lot of people that seems like magic. Like for me, like I'm a good marketer, but I'm not a programmer and I'm not a tech person and you are, you know, like you dive in and love that stuff. And I don't know, can you just speak to that a little bit? Because I'm sure you get asked about that in other places. I think that's amazing where you just see something and like, for example, you've also after automation clinic, you have pinnacle club, which was a higher price monthly program. You released like a plug in a month. One was a great dashboard script. You had one there that would, it was automatically ranking people for affiliates, which is amazing. It was a way to just have a leaderboard that would manage itself. I mean, like I would never, my my mind, my my right mind at least, you know, maybe if I had a couple of drinks, would think that I could have something done for that. So I, I don't know, like it's just laziness or what? Like how does it? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Pinnacle Club is a good example because every month is like something groundbreaking. Like month three is like a fully functioning upsell script, or month two is like a fully functioning offer selector. Like okay, you know, give this link to someone, and if you use Infusionsoft and and you give this link to someone via email, it will give them the best page from a list of offers. Like it ranks the pages and like by tags, by recent purchases, by products, by custom fields, like send them to the next best offer and the cool thing about it like if they saw the offer and you tag them well they won't see it again because it's one link and then it, it, it it'll be like well don't send it to them if they have the tag that they've seen the offer so it's like what it comes down to daryl is and i remember back in 05 when i started getting addicted to the feeling of creating something i, I remember like i all of it is a learning process i didn't know about creating and developing stuff and hiring programmers but i remember prior to getting married i heard about like rentacoder.com which is now freelancer which is it might even yeah it's freelancer now i went from rentacoder to v worker to freelancer and i heard that you know you can hire people in other countries and you know just think of something and they can create it and i was willing to to do that. I w- I'm pretty sure my description for my first project wasn't perfect, but it gave me a taste of that other side. And and I remember being in my honeymoon in Fiji and my wife didn't really know, but I would sneak on the computer at a dollar a minute, you know, to check up and see what this guy had created. And I, I remember it was like our first ever community for here and play. Like, I mean, we went from like just regular pages and stuff to like, Daryl, you could log in. And this was before Facebook. Like, I felt like I was already on, I wasn't Mark Zuckerberg, but I was like already doing that in my own little world. Like people were sending faith, faith I mean, not faith. Facebook. People are sending private messages and then they're like adding people to their buddy list all within my community and then creating their own lessons. It was like we had our own MySpace meets Facebook for the musician community and it was uh, it was like PHP Nuke. Like it didn't even exist. It doesn't even exist today. Like it's like open source platform. And, I, you know, I just got addicted to the creation of things that, that are in my mind. 
and what what di- from other people other people are just kind of they think it's it's a bigger process than it is right so somebody has a skill to do it somebody went to school to do exactly what it is in my mind that I want to create I am the visionary they're the implementer and as long as I can you know if I get an idea tonight take out my either my mind map software or my Evernote and I just write it in regular human language I try to describe it as best as I can from every angle from the administrative side to the the user side and it's nothing more than that it's nothing more than taking action I even I, I even have a video series that I did in 06 I said I'm going to document I'll show this to you Daryl too you might find it fascinating I said I'm going to document myself coming up with a new idea because I, I did it always seems like when I'm on honeymoons and stuff but um <laughs> I guess you know what it is because you can relax I think when you're in a relaxed state of mind and you know your body's just this like kind of empty and it's not as stressed because you're chilling and then you're like wow I got a light bulb so I said but this time I'm going to record myself mind mapping the idea mm. it was for audio personalizer I'm the only one to the this day yeah that I know personalizes audio messages like you can come page and it'll be like, hi, Daryl, happy birthday, you know, or it'll say, hi, Daryl, welcome to the site, or, or, you know, you can put it in follow-up, and it really comes across like I made this audio message for you. For you, yeah. yeah. No one's been doing that today, and and I have documented proof, video, I have like 10 videos showing, okay, this is what I wanted to do, I'm showing myself mind mapping it, I should offer it as a little uh, bonus. You could, stuff. you could totally. Yeah. And then I show myself putting it on Rent-A-Coder, I show myself sifting through the developers who want to work on it, and why I picked the one I picked, I show myself uh, going back and forth reviewing it, and then the final product that I give away, I think I give it away at hearandplay.com forward slash AP. I think I've given it away on stage, but there's no documentation for it. There's no help. It's not a software. I don't sell it. You got to figure it out. But if you want to, you know, check it out, hearandplay.com slash AP for audio personalizer. But yeah, to really answer your question, it's it's really about just taking action and get into a, a zone that very few go. And then once you get a taste of it, you're like, well, I can come up with anything pretty much. You tell me, you know, if something pops in my head, I'm not afraid to go figure out, you know, who's qualified to make it happen and then managing that process and bringing it to market. So I love that. So you said at the beginning, you're the visionary. You need to find the implementer with the skill set to implement what you want. And then you help explain that to them and the why to them. And really, you kind of are just the middleman between the need, the want, and the person who can fulfill on that, which is really what an entrepreneur should be. What I love is when you look up entrepreneur in the dictionary, it doesn't say it doesn't say the person who answers the phone, who mops the floors and cleans the toilets and does the accounting and answers the phone call. You know, what it does say is... What does it say? A person who organizes and operates a business or businesses. A person who organizes and operates. So that's a really good definition. Now, what do you think are some of the fundamentals for being success? Because this is something you said before, and I wanted to drill down a little bit when you said automation can't fix you know, a bad process. Automation can't fix a webinar that doesn't convert. What do you think are some of the most important, critical, and key fundamental things that people on the call need to know about? Right. What I'm teaching my clients now, which is sales. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, I think something's got to be sold. I think you got to be persuasive. So I would say at the at the foundation of all of this is sales and persuasion. And I don't care if you're selling an info product. I don't care if you're selling some VCs up in Silicon Valley. I don't care if you're selling your children on why they need to go to school and why they need to you know, think of it seriously. You're you're selling your team on being all in on this project, you know, to give it their all, incentivizing them, you know, to work hard. I think at the end of the day, you have you you should turn some percentage of your time to reading and educating oneself on sales and persuasion. You know, mm-hmm. Chuck Badini's book Influence was eye-opening for me. I could I couldn't put that book down, you know, and Dan Airely's book, I think it's a predictably irrational, just books along that, even the pop psychology stuff, you know, some people don't dig Malcolm Gladwell and stuff, but even his stuff, like just understanding or trying to understand, you know, how people think and how to be persuasive in your, in, in your communication, you know, like when people talk to me, they say they, they just want what I'm selling, like they don't even know what I'm selling, but they just feel like they want what I'm talking about, like, where do I sign up, you know? And so, you know, you have to be able to convey your thing in, in that way, you know, and, and understanding 
even the sales, you know, how, how that works. I call it hipper. I came up with my own little formula that takes all the different things, but the H is, is the hook, you know, and I don't care if you're talking to a small group, you got to have a hook, a theme, you know, where, you know, what are you going to do to grab their attention? The A to formula is attention, interest, desire, action. So you could call the hook, the hook is like that, the attention part of that formula. And, you know, it, there's different angles to take, like even in, in piano, you know, I could make a bet that, okay, well, the normal angle to take is, you know, you know, learn how to play piano in the comfort of your own home without spending, you know, years and years and expensive money on lessons, right? That could be like my main default hook. It's worked for years. But I could say, you know what, let's flip the script. Let's focus on our senior citizens on our list or, you know, maybe our more mature adults. And let's talk about the health properties of playing the piano, the relaxation and stress relieving properties. So I could have a whole different hook on research that has to do with music and how it affects the, the state of the brain brain and the relaxation. So that could be my hook. See, my hook is the angle I'm going to take, how I'm going to grab attention. And so, you know, the eye is the issue. What I can say there is you got to know people's issue better than they know it themselves. And when they, when they say Daryl understands me better than I understand me, then that trust is created there. Because a lot of people don't believe they can do what you're doing. It's not that they don't even believe you. They don't even believe themselves. They don't trust themselves, you know. And I ask people on the phone, it's like, you don't trust either one of two people. You don't either trust me or you don't trust you. And so uh, understanding the issue and, and really being able to connect. And then the, the P is poke. You know, you got to be able to cause a little bit of discomfort. This is telling people, well, well, what happens if you stay at the same way? Will you ever accomplish your dream of playing? Do you want to go to the grave? You know, I heard that the grave is the richest place because there is the dreams and the aspirations and the goals and the songs and the books and all the ideas that never came to fruition. Do you want to go to the grave knowing that you had music inside of you? Do you want to go to the grave knowing you had a great business idea inside of you? You know, that's just one angle to take when poking. Obviously, there's more direct things like what's going to happen if your business continues down this path. You know, the pill is the solution right the pill is what you have to offer your value in all of this the i is is no the e is the effects that's like the benefits and and you know make it real business benefits advantages and features research the difference between those three things because people naturally sell i mean people like business people want to be feature driven they think that people buy a number of hours like even if someone's going to hire me to be their coach and if they say well how many hours does this come with you know you're you, you coaching me i say i'm not about hours. I'm about giving you the result that you want, the outcome that you want. If I can do that without talking to you, I told you this earlier, if I could do that without talking to you, why why does it matter that we're on the phone four times? Do you want 10 leads a week or for your high, you know, a product service or do you have to talk to me 10 times? Which one do you want? Yep. Yep. And real players get it. Real players understand the name of the game is results. You know, we did have a good conversation about that, that was sometimes there's people actually, I've talked about a client that I had that I had turned down because they were more interested in having me work full time than about the results. And that's like you said, if it's about the results, let's focus on the results because it's the same thing. I have goals every day. And if I get my four things done in the day, I can take the rest of the day off, you know, because it's about the results. So, so, okay. Sorry. I was interrupting though. You're in the flow. So we got H I P P. So we got the hook. We got the issue, we got the poke, then we got the pill, then we have the effects. And then, you know, once you've got someone built up there, whether it's in your VSL, your webinar, your personal selling, your phone consultation, then you can't you can't leave them there. You got to have the response. You got to elicit the response. And that's all the things you do to basically put the call to action out there, you know, and sometimes you use scarcity, sometimes you use the deadline. Even if I'm on the phone with someone, it's like, I say, you know, I, I'd rather a yes or no than a maybe, or I, I'll think about it. Either based on what we've talked about, you know you want to do this or you don't. And even the no is okay, but you need to decide. And then, you know, my music niche, I'm like, even God doesn't like maybe, you know, in the Bible, he says a, a lukewarm person, he, he'd rather you be hot or cold, but never lukewarm. So, you know, the response is about really getting that decision, you know? And that's why I said, if you were down to your last and you could sell, you, you should never be broke. You should never be broke. If you've got value to provide to someone out there, to a group of people, they have an issue, and you can sell, you'll never be broke. And and you have a customer database? Are you are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 
well, what's wrong in this? You got a customer database that you sold to before, and you know life happens, things happen. But if you got down to your last and you sorted by recency, you got on the phone, did consultations, and figured out what they really want and dedicated that. And in, and in exchange value, I've seen it work. I've seen it happen, not only for me, but for other people. You know, that's the process. Mm, 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 mm. Awesome. So there you have it. This is, and I agree, sales is such, where are we selling? You're selling yourself to your spouse. You're selling yourself to your kids, trying to persuade them what you want to do. You're selling yourself at work, your ideas, your projects, your the results, the direction you think you guys should be taking. You sell yourself to get the job. We're selling ourselves all day every day and honestly sales I think something you can speak differently but what I love that you bring up is getting on the phone with people and finding out their need it's not this talk about trying to sell ice to Eskimos you know about selling flogging snake oil that's not it at all it's about like you said if you can get on the phone you can just talk to people I remember you even said before a lot of ways sales isn't even that tough because you're not trying to con- like you might be trying to convince them but you even what I like to say it's like almost like a consultation like you're a psychotherapist like you're just trying to talk to them and get them to trust you and then to open up and confess some things to you about the problems that they're facing that maybe they don't want to talk about because it's ugly or it's not something they're proud of and you know especially social media and that right you never no one ever was it a success as many fathers but failure as an orphan like no one's like putting up like look at this failure I got like no one's like making a big stink on on any social media platforms about their failures and then once you get them to talk about and you know what their pain point is and you know why it's a pain point and if it's something you can help then just offer to help them with it and then almost like a stern and loving parent like you said, like, I'd prefer you make a yes or no, but don't waste my time with a maybe because there's other people I can help. And I just love that because it's very kind of matter of fact and everyone can hear and feel that your tone is not pushy, not pressure. Like there's no, there's no pressure. It's not salesy at all, but it's just really about helping people. So I love that. And by the way, the URL you gave did work that talking about just giving value left, right, and center, the audio personalizer tool does help and it is great. And no one else does that. So yeah, Jermaine, you're just such a good man. Anyways, so right, so they have to learn how to sell. That's one of the key, like, fundamental things that if someone wants to be successful in business, they have to learn how to sell. We just gave them the formula: hook, issue, poke, pill, effects, and response. What else do we need if we're trying to be successful in business? All right. So if if you know how to sell, you know, and the reason why I put that one in front because you know, even, even they tell you in your career, you know, even if you're going down the corporate world, America and all that, you know, they say people change careers, I don't know, three, four, five, six, seven times, right? But the point is people change careers. So that selling, that persuasion, that ability to move to action, move someone to action. And you know what? to be able to sell yourself too. I think sales sales is not just in out. Sales is is inward inward. Sales is just persuasion whether you're persuading someone else or you're persuading your darn self. That's just very important as a, a bedrock for a foundation. And then you know, you just always, you need the right market and you need to be clear about that. And it's a market that's already hungry. I mean, obviously you can be a market creator and that's a different, that's a harder position to be in. You can, you know, yeah, go create a market and, you know, like how like Steve Jobs, like kind of created sort of this iPad, you know, smartphone, or at least take it to the next level, right? And that's that's a little different. You know, you, you're going for something big, and, and we need those kinds of things. But, you know, something that's a little bit more certain is a market that's just already hungry. You know, the late, great Gary Hubbard tells a story of, like, the hot dog stand, and he's like, okay, he asked his audience, like, what, what would you guys, if you could, like, wave a magic wand and you had a hot dog stand, you could ask for anything in the world to make this hot dog stand successful, and then, you know, people would say, oh, I want the best sign, you know, like, you know, I want the best hot dog maker. I want the best, you know, I want the best like design and logo. And he was like, oh, I'll give you guys all of that. In fact, you guys can combine together and have this magic all-star hot dog stand. He said, this is what I would ask for. He said, I would ask for a starving crowd. Because if you have a starving crowd that's like been partying all night and you're the only hot dog stand there when they need you, I don't think you have to have a great sign. I don't I think you, your hot dogs have to be like the best gourmet, like in the top 25 food television ranking. I think that that's starving crowd. So there we go. If you got a crowd and you're bringing to market something that, you know, they really want and, and it doesn't take, even going back to my foundation, you could have t- a tenth of the sales process together. Like you could have a tenth of the, the persuasion that you need together and 
and, and that process is not as hard because, you know, they're already prone. So look at what I did, you know, in, in the year 2000. Like, everybody's, you know, learning sheet music. That's the normal way to go play the piano. And then I said, okay, there's this church market that is just no one's talking to a church musician, which, mind you, that's me. Like, grandma raised me in the church. Mom raised me in the church. And I've been playing in church for, like, over a decade at this point, even as a kid. And no one's talking to that musician. That is, like, the most school of hard knock thing you got to do. Most people actually just say, God gave that little boy that gift. You know, that's what most people say. God, God just put that music inside that little boy. And, you know, it's like that kind of thing. It's never this structured, you could learn how to play and be, you know, a church musician. And so that was just a market. And looking back at my story, that was just untapped, hungry. And you put a course in front of that because we, we delve in jazz and all kinds of things. But this particular market, my God, I didn't even know what I was doing as a 19 year old for the most part. I mean, my persuasion was way different than it is today. And I'm sure I made a lot of mistakes, but I put my first video product in front of them after having success with my first like book, my first course. And my God, like I remember that month we did $40,000. I was like 19. And prior to that, I'd only done like maybe 10 to 12,000. We were still successful for that, that part of my journey, but like we like three X and never went back. That was the power of like, this market is pent up with, they need something like, look at the dollar beer clubs and the dollar shave clubs and things like this isn't new stuff, but people are coming to market to help problems in ways that other people haven't thought of. And it'd be Look at look at Uber and stuff like that. Like taxis aren't new, but people are coming to market and making things faster and easier and more efficient and more convenient. And and so, you know, like like for example, there's a lot of things that that me and my wife, I'm like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And I can't even think of some of the things, but in the run of a day, it's like there's gotta be a better way. Somebody's gonna come along and make this easy for us. Like now Uber's delivering food and stuff. So there's going to come a time where, you kidding me, we got to go to the store? Nah, people, the store's just going to bring it right to us and the mailmen aren't going to have to really deliver mail anymore. I mean, they're down the drones are delivering it and stuff. So you just, you figure out what people really want and you give it to them and I'm telling you, they buy. Mm, 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 mm. So well said. Hungry market. Yeah, Perry Marshall talks about a bleeding neck. You want to find a bleeding neck market, a market that, you know, no one's really going to debate with you if their neck is bleeding. They just want the problem fixed. So great analogy. So, all right, so we got sales, then we've got the hungry market. Is this when automation comes in? Is this where we start automating things? No. <laughs> no, no, the automation comes in a little later. So, so once you have a a market right and then you you have a process you have you have a process so a lot of people are you know i, I talk about manual system automates automates actually the last part probably delve in the manual in the beginning you know you're you're, you're, I call it gear one. As an entrepreneur, you're in gear one and, you know, you're doing a lot of these things yourself. You're, you're a lot closer to the customer. I remember picking up the sales calls. I, I shouldn't have been doing this, but my wife, who was my girlfriend, like 17 years ago, we'd be in a movie and like when these $70 sales were coming into my cell phone, it said, you know, press one to accept this call. I always had like the little prompt on there. I would like run out of the theater no matter what we were watching and I would take that sale. So I'm delving in the manual, but you know, it gave me a really intimate closeness with my customer to understand them. And so I, I never negate that whole go straight automated. Half of the people here trying to set up automated stuff don't even really understand their customer, never talk to a customer, never really understand that. So, you know, you, you have some manual things going on and you, you might have to do, you know, the emailing and the broadcasting yourself. You know, you don't, how can you automate something that you don't know works? So in the beginning, yeah, you're going to send broadcasts. You're going to build your list. You're going to, you're going to be in that sort of manual mode and you don't want to stay there too long next you want to turn it into a system and a, and a system doesn't necessarily mean an automated system a system is just a predictable way of doing things you know where you take out all the uh, variances you know you can say you know let's say you somebody calls in and right now you're kind of in the manual mess mode and you don't really have a way to accept that call. And, you know, you're, you're just, hey, uh, here on play.com, how can I help you? And then they say one thing and then you just kind of whatever comes to, to mind, like I used to do, you know, that's manual mess. You get a script. That's the script is an example of a system because then you say, OK, wait, they may be asking X, Y, Z. You say, wait. 
you know, how this normally works. That's like my first line if I was going to systematize a mess. You know how this normally works. And, you know, I've got a couple questions to, to see where you are in your playing. And then you take them down a path to get them to reveal to you where they are. And then, and then you go to a close to make sure, first of all, that you're giving them what they really need. Right. Um, so once you have a system, then you can say, OK, well, how do we automate that? Even how you make a VSL, a video sales letter or make a webinar, you know, you should be following some path. Like I had one client and he sent me his script. He was only closing one in 10 people. And I was like, that's a horrible conversion on the phone to me. I mean, I can almost do that on an automated webinar. And I looked at his script and his script started at like almost the E and I mean, not even the E, the script started on the R part, like <laughs> <laughs> the, the last R, like, well, there's you ready only to buy. You ready to buy? How about Basically, buy now? Want to buy now? What about yeah, now? What right. About now? Right. Like his script was like, well, basically how my coaching works is, and he was just going into all the features of it. Like, you know, we get on the phone for this long and then we do, I'm like, dude, you haven't even hit on the pain points or what they're doing or why they, I mean, at least you should ask why they've taken time out of their, their schedule to, to meet. Like what's going on? Like, that's the first question. Right. You that's know, a quote that I like, it's a prescription without diagnosis is it's malpractice. malpractice. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, you know, it's, it's those things. And then the automation comes in, you got something that works. Then you say to yourself, man, what if I didn't have to do take them through this manual process every time or didn't have to rely on sending broadcasts every week or, you know, things like that. What if I took the best of everything I've learned in manual mode and in and and what I've already systematized, and what if I make it automatic? Like, like even if you have an offline business that really does deal with customers, but to be able to like push a button after that. So, like in my office, we know that everybody has to push an outcome when they talk to people. We use like a, a particular technology called TurboDial, but what it allows us to do is it, it syncs into Infusionsoft, and we can always say after we talk to Daryl or we talk to John. We can push an outcome, and for my rep, without them doing anything, an email goes out saying, it was a pleasure speaking with you. <laughs> and then if it wasn't a pleasure speaking with them, we do another outcome. Like, this outcome is like, <laughs> this outcome is like, uh, thanks for calling, but we're not going to say it was a pleasure speaking with you, you know. And then it may, like, wait for seven days, and it may follow up with, like, you know, you I always say automation is front-loaded, but automation can be as good as you you make it. So if I say, okay, based on this scenario, could, how can I extend the arms of my sales reps? Well, what if we had a timer and automatically from that sales rep, from that one call, from that one button they pushed, they get an email, you know, checking back in in seven days. We also incorporate SMS in our sales process with our reps. What if they got a text message saying, hey, Dr. Lewis, just, you know, checking in on you based on our conversation last week, wanted to see where you were in there, you know, something like that. And then, you know, what of a task? Because in Infusionsoft, you can create tasks for people and it's going to be waiting for them in their dashboard. What if a task popped up in 10 days? So automation is there to extend, you know, a system that's already in place because very well my sales reps could get off the phone, go to their Gmail or go to their enterprise email and send the same email. Yes, my reps can go to TurboDial and then send the same text message, copy and paste. There's even, like I use Text Expander on the Mac to you type in a keyword and it finishes your sentence. Yeah, though that's a manual system. But, you know, to be able to automate that and then to go on to the next call or whatnot and then have those all those actions happen for them that's the power of automating something that you've already proven to work mm. so i think i want to make a cat i want to make a difference here first of all that was a great explanation and what i loved is it's it's leveraging it's automating but it's also leveraging because as i got better at automation i found that my to-do list didn't shorten i think the dream of like kicking on the beach i mean you can go kick it on the beach but i think the type of people at least if an entrepreneur you just go stir crazy, right? Like you just need to do something. So I find that as I automate more, I also do more. But the beautiful thing is that when you take days off, times off, like I went and saw a Rihanna concert this week, the rest of my business was still running, even though, right, even though I was on a break, you know, those emails are being sent, those text messages are still going, all that stuff is happening, all that follow up is happening. 
So I love that because what you're talking about, you're not talking about like, oh, you know, like that, that eye in the pie screen, we're going to click a couple buttons and money's going to fly to your, your computer. You know, you talked about how you 3X your income. And for a lot of people, that would be substantial. 10 grand a month going to 30, 40 grand a month. That would be phenomenal. That can be life-changing money for a lot of people on this call. But at the end of the day, you're still getting up. You're still going to work. You're still, I mean, hold up. You're still doing things, but you're doing it smart. So that way you're as busy as you need or want to be, but it's not directly related to how much income you're making. I remember we had a talk. This is years ago. We said you were trying to figure it out your hourly wage, and it was something like ten thousand dollars an hour or something like that. Like it was some crazy figure, because when you work, you work smart. An interview like this wouldn't just be one thing and then done, and then you'd have to do a new thing tomorrow. You'll find four ways to use an interview like this in your business, and those are four things that you've right. You've done it once. You can hand it off to other people because, like you say, you've got that process or those systems where it'll then be turned into a blog article, and then it may be turned into an ebook. All these other things are created, but it's based off a system that you did, and you just do the first step, the most leveraged piece, the piece that only you can handle, correct? Yep, couldn't have said it better. Yep, you've got internal systems, you got personnel systems, you got sales systems, you got marketing systems. So you just, it's a mindset. Like I said in the beginning, a systematic, automated mindset. But to think with the end in mind, you know, and then not go at things, you know, haphazardly or manual every time, uh, this time one way, that time the other way, you know, to really be minded about how you systematize. I even heard, you know, President Obama, you know, only wears three suits. I read this in some article, whether it's true or not, he's got black, gray and blue, I think. And and I even re re remember Tony Robbins saying that he used to be a mess to figure out what suit he's going to wear to his next speaking gig. But what they did, they turned it into a system for his assistant. He put his 10 suits, he laminated and said, suit one, suit two, suit three. So he can look at his little laminated catalog and be like, I want suit one, shirt three, socks four, and shoes five. Like that's a system too. Like you know, everything can be systematized. And then he could probably further automate it by saying, you know, he could set up some rules and conditions for his assistant, like just like an infusion stuff, but do it in a human level and be like, okay, if I'm speaking at this kind of event where they're paying me this kind of rate, I want to wear the fancy suit. But if I'm speaking at like some athletic association or they're paying me this kind of rate, I want to wear this suit. And then put those conditions to empower the staff. So even then you don't even have to do that. And that would be more of the automation level of it. So just to make that plain, even in a personal level. Yeah. And well said, I think an easy place to start is just a checklist. You know, if you're trying to figure out how do I make a system or if that sounds really complicated, I mean, just understanding systems design and systems thinking, an easy way to think is just a checklist. Get started with a checklist, step one, step two, step three, you know, and just build from there and then look for a way to leverage this, like Jermaine said. So great examples that audio personalizer uh, software gave away where he was making those calls himself. And then he found that after this works really well, he'd love to keep that personalized way. But how can I automate it? How can I leverage it? And now I don't know. I know you and I know what's going on, but he uses this tool to automatically call his customers. And it doesn't leave. Is it a different recording if they answer? Or does it just go always straight to voicemail every time? <laughs> well, what we do now, kind of two different things, but if we are doing a voice broadcast inside Infusionsoft, you can send one to a live person if they pick up, like you, if you say, hey, this is Daryl, and then, you know, that gets one thing, and then if it goes to answer machine, oh, man, that's where we have fun, because it's like, they don't know that it's automation at all at work, <laughs> and you know, you could do some pretty fun stuff, you know, right. like, and, but now what I'm doing is if they, I don't like to blow my cover anymore so when they pick up live i know this sounds kind of bad but i recorded that busy signal off of youtube like eh, 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 eh. <laughs> and i don't know if you can do this or not but you know it, it goes busy it goes busy on them kind of like the, the call disconnected but then what will happen some people will call back and like i lost the call and then there we go now we got an inbound call and the psychology is different for an inbound by the way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally different. So then when it goes to their voicemail, it'll automatically merge their first name or whatever piece you want in to personalize it. That's just so ninja. So that's the process you took you through. So we talked about how sales and understanding sales and persuasion. By the way, you might actually enjoy a future interview I have coming up. There's a guy here locally. He's just gotten his master's. He's actually taken Robert Cialdini's social work and he's taking it further. Now his interest is more voice inflection on the effect of persuasion, but he used so influence 
Influence was like the mainstream version of what Cialdini's work was. There's a textbook version, and he worked off of that for all his future research. So he's not even a business guy, but I've got him coming on the show in the future because I want him to build on that. So I'll be sure to get you a copy of that when I get some of the goods out of him. But back to this. So we've got Hipper. You talked about sales and persuasion being the most powerful things about influence. The book Influence and Predictably Irrational, if anyone's looking for good books to read, those are great ones to help you understand the psychology, the power of persuasion, have our Hipper formula, hook, issue, poke, pill, effectiveness, response, talking about how we need a hungry market first and foremost, because you can't sell something, even if you're a gourmet chef, someone has already eaten and they're full, even if you made the most delicious meal in the world, they're full, they're not going to be able to eat it, so you need a hungry market, and talking about that, you might have to start with a manual process first, gear one, work through things a few times, get into a checklist, then start refining the process and looking for ways to leverage it and automate it, and then extend it, and then obviously that translates into the mindset of systems thinking which is excellent. I mean, that right there is a blueprint. And I love even just the very simple tip at the very beginning that you had, which helps people with all of this, which is just pick up the phone, call your most recent last customers and or your most recent last customers in order of most recent to least recent and just talk to them and find out what their pain points are, find out what pain, what they need help with, find out this stuff. And you might not even have something to offer them at the time, but get that research, do that data, and then come back to them with something that maybe you can do for a handle, right? If you don't want to do just just one-on-one people, maybe some sort of group program or maybe some sort of course or whatever. People listen to some sort of software or tool you develop for anyone that's listening to this as a way to help enhance your customer lifetime value. So Jermaine, this has been really powerful, not only just the knowledge, the information, but the tools you've given have been very helpful. I mean, the audio personalizer software itself is worth probably now a couple thousand dollars at least. What do you, where should people go? Where should we send them if they want more info from you? Right. As you're talking, man, I'm like, I should develop audio personalizer into a SaaS because I could see like... You should. Yeah, yeah. Like we could have voice actors, like if the person didn't want to like you could you could record the first names in your own voice like you could you know it, it literally takes 20 minutes to be like hi abigail hi andy hi bob and you did i mean i basically did i i it, it like it has the built-in recording into it and everything but even if they didn't didn't want to do that i could just hire like a bunch of subsets of voice talents to have the built-in things and you know 48 hours later you have your message and then we hook into twilio and then you know, basically have your voice broadcast sending messages to people's voicemails that why would you do it yourself when their name is in it and everything you would possibly say is in it and have all your outcomes. And I'm like, we could just, I, I just don't know of a service right now that does that. And, and like I said, we did this, like, <laughs> I don't even want to give the exact date because we're trying to make this evergreen. But we did this so many years ago, you know, but way before people thought of this. And what and what we're doing now, people won't be doing for another, you know, five, ten years. So um, just starts me thinking, you know, what else you can do. But but don't – I think a lot of people go to what else, and they haven't even done the foundations. The foundational stuff is still the real stuff. Like, like sales does not really change much. Persuasion, how we're wired, does not really change much. You can go learn. I know you're a big studier of the 19th century, you know, business people like the – P.T. Barnum's and, you know, those guys, you know, because they were doing this stuff without all the technology and, and and stuff. So, you know, go study those people, the classics and the, the Napoleon Hills and, and that stuff, because a lot of it, you know, a lot of it is still just as much of, uh, as applicable today. And then you can automate the stuff and just take it to the next level. And that's where my expertise comes in. So if you've been intrigued, you can head over to well, first of all, if you're qualified, something that I've been doing that I haven't done before is eating my own pudding. I will get on the phone with certain people. Got it? You got to have some sales. I don't really delve in the newbie market, so just you know, go through my stuff and my blog posts if you're just getting started. That that won't be a good phone call. But if you've got things going, you know, you're earning six figure income or close to, but you really want to take things up a notch. You haven't systematized it. It's kind of like you've done it, but you're like, man, I don't know how I did this, but I did it. But I, I still don't feel comfort in knowing that it's systematized and that it's repeatable. Mm -hmm. If that's you, go over to automation call. 
automationcall.com, automationcall.com. I fill out the survey, get some time in my calendar, and let's talk about it. Now, don't be surprised if I take you down the hipper formula, but <laughs> it'll be based on, you know, if we're a good fit, I'd love to talk with you. Now, if you want to just kind of go through some of my training, you can go over to automationvideos.com. And, you know, that's just straight training and videos. And I'm going to track if you started the video, if you got to the middle and mm -hmm. you got to the end. You can see some automation at work on the page. And then if you're like, I just want a little taste, um, got several blog posts at my main site, automationclinic.com. And those are three ways to get it from the most personal all the way down to the, you know, I don't really want to give you my name or email, but I just want to check out what you're doing. That's, that's the automationclinic.com. There we go. So automationclinic.com. What were the other two URLs? Automationvideos.com. If you want to like go through one of my series, my video training series. And then if you're like, I want to talk to this guy, I am qualified. Automationcall.com. Automationcall.com. And honestly, as a caveat, another guest we had, Dan Fagella, I remember he would message me to like fighting, not fighting, but just like, how can I get Griggs on the phone? You remember that? I, I was know. like, dude, my buddy Dan really wants to talk to you. So honestly, this is an exclusive thing. This is not a URL that's been passed around anywhere else. This is a privilege to you my fellow listeners yeah there's no tricks no strings attached Jermaine's definitely the real deal check out his stuff I fully endorse him this man definitely helped change my life in a big big way helped me connect the dots um, it's part of why I consider him one of my best friends he's just a phenomenal human being a phenomenal marketer one of the best in the world I've ever seen at his craft um, and I just yeah all I can say is he's here for a second time because I'd prefer to bring someone back that I know is really quality reintroduce you to him again than bring a bunch of new people in because for me the quality of the guests I have on the show means a lot to me because I know that as my listeners, as my audience, that you guys are coming to me for a helpful guide because before I saw Jermaine on stage, I know I'd spent 50 plus thousand dollars on stuff and I did learn a lot and I have implemented that. But, I, you know, Jermaine really did help me connect the, to connect the dots together. And I'm sincere in all those URLs. There's none of them are tracking URLs. I won't know how much traffic I'm giving. So there's no real benefit to me. It really is for you just trying to connect you with people who really can help. So Jermaine walks his talk. He knows what he's talking about about and I fully wholeheartedly endorse everything he does because he's just a phenomenal human being and I don't know just just being his friend and listening and doing what he says has helped immensely so if if you any of this has resonated with you I highly 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 recommend you get on his list and check out some of his stuff so Jermaine thank you so much it is an honor and a pleasure to have you it's always a pleasure when we chat I can't wait till I come back to Cali so we can hit CrossFit together I'm, I'm trying you better be training man I'm, I'm trying I'm gonna be throw down I remember that last time when we were on the rower and it was like neck and neck i'm i'm gonna make it not yeah i'm, I'm coming back i'm taking a minute to win it man a minute to win it so <laughs> just thank you and be sure to give the girls and brennan and sarah a big hug for me and i just appreciate you man so much i sure will man and i mirror all that stuff back to you you're a great guy i've been saying when are you going to be back out here so we can hang out i'm headed to crossfit right now to do a one mile trial so let's see if i could you know get in the lower five minutes and uh, <laughs> you know it's just all about just being your next best whether that's in business or sales or fitness or relationships you know we're just always striving to just mm -hmm. be a little bit better and that better is always over the horizon i don't think you ever get to better because there's always the next better but you know you're just always striving to be better and so you make me better and you said I made you better and make you better and that's what it is iron sharpening iron so it's always a pleasure to be on the phone with you and in person with you and to be introduced to your listeners my pleasure and uh, hopefully I'll talk to some of you guys soon thank you Daryl you've reached the end of our interview now first let me thank you for listening I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know and now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, what can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give to them to just do it for you? Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success. So please reach out and interact. 
You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. You're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast. And if you're enjoying them, please leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you. Take care of yourself. And remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I believe in you.